So, hello everybody. My name is Daniel Romada. I'm a junior professor for digital education at Berlin University of the Arts and Einstein Center Digital Future. And Frederick Broadbeck is here with me. He's a scientific assistant for digital education. And he's the main programmer of the project teacher.js, which we'll present you in next uh, 20, 25 minutes. And I hope you will enjoy the ride because it's something quite new and potentially even disruptive. So, in fact, you already see what you see in the screen, shared screen is using teacher.js. And now it's this. So, it's a code which we developed ourselves, and I'll explain you in a minute why and what is, the, what is it doing and why is it potentially disrupting. So, first, answer, I will answer a few questions like what is TeacherJS and why TeacherJS? And you will see it's closely related to my activities in the domain of outdoor online teaching and Raspberry Pi technologies. And then Frederick will describe you more closely how does it work and how can you use it and what modules are out there. So first, what is teacher.js? So JS, that means JavaScript. The code uh, of this project is written in JavaScript, both backend as well as frontend. It's all running in browser. That's a very, very important point. So it's a web-based communication teaching tool. It's designed to run on solar-powered devices outdoors, and it aims to keep both bandwidth and power consumption low. For this reason, it doesn't make use of video streaming, but instead integrates a number of different modules for audio calls, chat, collaborative editing, code stream, HTML, JavaScript presentations, and Wikipedia browsing. So these are the initial modules which we already have after a few months of development, but the system is quite modular, so there will be more to come. Teaching students, student clients, their browsers communicate, synchronize via, via a lightweight event-based protocol. It's open source, so we'll compare ourselves with uh, Big Blue Button, which is also an open source online teaching tool. So in comparison with Big Blue Button, we observe significant decrease of amount of data transferred from the server in the scenario of a content-oriented lecture. So we did already some testing, some benchmarking, and it looks quite well. We'll get to this at the end of the presentation. But first, why? Why did we decide to develop something new? There are already so many different projects. Well, as indicated, we, I want to do, as a teacher, I want to do outdoor online teaching. And I would like to teach uh, in the parks, in gardens, in forests. So, and ideally, I would like to be, as, an, as a professor, as a teacher, to be completely independent from the existing corporate infrastructure, as long as possible. So, on this strange photo, which you see in front of you, you see kind of a piece of wood there in the background. And on this piece of wood, there are some circuits attached, uh, including Raspberry Pi 4, which is in fact quite a powerful machine. And essentially, that's my server. That's we already tested it last summer semester, and I continue next next summer semester further. Students connect to this machine directly. There is practically no intermediate uh, and no intermediary in, in between. And uh, this server is providing all I need as a teacher to do my to do my online online lesson. Good. It's a part of a project teacher.solar for which I got a little funding from Stifterverband last year ago. So if you are more interested, you can just go to the, this address teacher.solar and get some more information about what we are doing or what, what is this experimentation with outdoor online learning about. And within the scope of this project, we developed teacher.js. Once again, what you see here on the photo is a Raspberry Pi, small computer, 
for cars, quite powerful if you know how to program it. It could be difficult to run a big blue button on it and to provide a good uh, learning experience to people, but uh, with Teacher.js, it's working quite nicely. So it has certain limitations, of course. It's not a huge server. It doesn't have so much RAM. It is, it is maybe like four, mega, four gigabytes of memory or eight gigabytes of memory. And it's a challenge to make teaching tool, online teaching tool run on it like a real-time teaching tool, but we managed. And on the right side, you see a 4G modem. So essentially component which allows Raspberry Pi to communicate with a cellular network. And that's basically all one needs so that student can connect to the, to the server directly and interact. So how it works in practice, this device gets a fixed IP address and a host name and students, wherever they are, they can be even on another continent. They just put in their browser URL of this machine and then they just join the session. You will see a demo in five minutes or even less. But before we get to this, I want to explain the main paradigmatic shift in regards to this project, and that's that teaching is not equal to screen sharing. These days, in these Corona days, we are fairly, all of us are accustomed to do screen sharing all the time. That's basically what I'm doing as well in this moment. I'm sending, my graphic card is sending megabytes and megabytes of video signal to, to you, and this video signal is broadcasted to you. But this is in fact quite suboptimal. You don't need to do it essentially. So the question is, can someone please tell me why teachers need to broadcast megabytes of video signal when, while, sorry, a little error, while it would be more efficient and comfortable to broadcast to student browsers, few bytes containing a comment, for example, display slide and its parameters from URL X. And that's exactly what TeacherJS is doing. And we call it code casting. So little definition, code casting, shortened form of code broadcasting is distribution and execution of program code snippets in JavaScript in this case forwarded from the source, that means teacher viewport, to one or multiple target viewports, student browsers. Viewport is essentially equivalent to browser. And browsers are everywhere and they are very powerful tools, so we don't see any reason to use any anything else. Okay, and another, another conceptual or let's say guideline or a guiding principle which we implement within this uh, project is I call it one class, one room, one server. You can also call it one teacher, one room, one server, but the teacher can of course change within the session. So let's call it like this. The idea is that uh, each teacher carries around or is responsible for his own room. That's very common in a physical space. Normally, teacher has keys from his classroom. He opens the classroom or she opens the classroom and closes it. And that's basically it. That's his responsibility to keep the room in order. And we push this analogy even further and basically teacher is responsible for his room and for, for his server and he essentially installs his system on a Raspberry Pi or his laptop, whatever. Even tablets will be, will be possible in the future. And that's it. Students connect to him, to him, to the system. And the teacher is the one who is responsible for this digital environment. So now a little demo. For those of you who are, who are with us, feel free to point your browser, another tab of it, or another window, to one.teacher.solar. And I will just maybe show you. Okay. This is the, this is the little, little device which we are using. Yeah, so this is the machine with which you will be connected. And I see people appearing there in the, on the left and this being said 
I now give word to Frederick. So we have some eight, nine people connected and let's see if it will crash. <laughs> Hopefully not. We already did some tests with approximately nine, 10 students and the experience was quite nice. Okay, Fred, the word is yours. All right, I'm going to go to screen sharing now. Which is, yep, showing the tool itself. So um, I will continue from here. Um, basically outlining a little bit the, the system architecture of, of the server. In this case, a Raspberry Pi 4, the one that Daniel just showed you. Um, which basically connects and integrates a number of different services and applications. So basically everything we need to run the system, to run TeachSJS as an application and its connected components actually runs in fact on the device itself. So that involves a web server that acts as a proxy for several different services. Among of those, TeachSJS is one of them. And TeachSJS again also integrates existing solutions um, based and, and also adds our own solutions and our own, our own models that'll, that I'll be getting into in just a moment. Um, in the future we would also like to host our own matrix server which we currently don't do yet but it's, it's one of the next steps that we're going to target. So talking about the different services and modules, one of the big modules that we're using is a um, WebRTC audio server, which allows us to do voice calls, audio calls, being able to speak with one another. And on top of that, the TeacherJS application also implements several different modules for different purposes. In fact, I'm not admin. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. All right. Does that work now? Yeah. Not... Sorry, that was my bad. I Daniel was the teacher had, had the teacher role before, and now I am now I am taking over the teacher role. So whatever I'm doing, all my interactions will be broadcast to you, the the students or the clients, so to speak. Um, but coming back to the modules that I just mentioned, um, we implement different modules for different purposes. One of them is being able to collaboratively edit documents. And for that, we use an Etherpad Lite instance, which you're also seeing in the background here um, as a way of keeping notes or, yeah, as I said, collabor co collaboratively writing text in the classroom together with the students. Um, another one, another important one is the chat functionality. And for this, we uh, repurpose an existing matrix server or several of them that are federated that are already in use in our team and at UDK, um, which basically creates a, integrates a, a web-based client to be able to interact with the matrix home server. And then we have a Wikipedia module. That's one of our own own custom custom modules, which is meant to be used for 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 browsing Wikipedia basically as a group. And maybe I can just switch to Wikipedia for a moment and show what I mean by that. So I can type in type in a keyword, which will bring up a Wikipedia article, um, which you should also see now in your client. Um, which means this is not an image, this is not a video, basically. Basically, everybody is, is navigating to the site, can select things, can copy things, can use the search function and so on, um, scroll around if they want. But whenever I, in my role as the teacher, say we're going to jump to a certain section, then, of course, um, your client will sync with mine and everybody will be on the same page, so to speak. can also go to a different page and yeah, basically browse around. But going back to the presentation now, um, jumping back here, 
Um, yeah, the last one is basically what you're seeing already, me giving a presentation and you being able to follow slide by slide. Um, so when am I proceed to the next slide, you get the idea, uh, everybody's in sync. And as Daniel already mentioned before, we also ran a test concerning the, uh, the data volume and the data rates comparing Big Blue, Big, Big Blue Button instance and our TeacherJS instance. Um, where we could already see um, that both the in and outgoing traffic is a lot less in our case with the TeacherJS instance. And we ran this test with, with audio on and with four connected clients. So again, the more clients connect, I think the more pronounced this effect or the discrepancy between the, uh, the, the data volume in general will be. <clears throat> Summing it up and looking at the average number, um, yeah, it becomes quite clear that TeacherJS uses a lot less bandwidth compared to Big Blue Button, for instance, as one of the established players in the field. I think your camera is off. You're going to take over? Okay. okay. I can take over, but your camera was off, so maybe you can you can turn on your camera and I screen again I share the screen again. So here we are. Is the screen shared now? Yes, good. So I'll just rehearse a little, repeat what Fred just said. Um, it's a new project, but already it has all features which uh, I, for example, as a teacher, need to do a good outdoor online learning course. I'm now claiming the admin role. Oh, now you see it, that's what And let's say I, well, let's see what's going on in the matrix room here. We even have a matrix room dedicated to this project project and we'll get to this later. Okay, but I'm not signed in. Maybe let's sign in. So in teacher JS it's the teacher who decides when when the chat it takes place, when the presentation takes place, when uh, I don't know other like shared notes take place. So there's always just one activity in certain moment, which I think is in the long run better for teaching. I as a teacher am very much dissatisfied with the current possibility to have a parallel chat. And yeah, so now you see like chatting room as we teach JS about the project. I get back to presentation. What are the next steps? Well, shared video viewing. Maybe you know this feature from uh, Big Blue Button. Uh, there is something like share external video, which is in a sense also a code casting feature because the teacher can play and pause the video and this information is being propagated in the, in the browsers. Whiteboard, so to have something like a Miro module in this additional to Etherpad and chat and presentation on Wikipedia module. Collaborative reading. This is something which is related to my main project, uh, research project of digital primer, feeble.digital. Essentially reading together or singing together. Also by means of some JavaScript uh, code casting magic. I, as a teacher, plan to use this and only this during the next semester to do online learning. And ideally, we would like to also secure some funding for this project. It's an open source project, so source code is on in GitHub. And we hope to extend the community. Now it's maybe four or five people here at Berlin University of the Arts who are interested. And it's quite minimalist code, so you can install it in a few minutes. It's not a huge system like Jitsi or Big Blue Button. 
what else? Yeah. Well, some take home lesson. First, it is possible to have an online teaching toolkit running on a Raspberry Pi hardware. So essentially you can literally carry around your server if you want to do so, if you think it's important and increases your autonomy as a teacher. Replacing video streaming with code casting paradigm leads to significant bandwidth reduction. That's what we saw on those slides here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I overload the system since there are too many, too many new slides. So these are the limits of the architecture. Okay, what do we do now? Do we restart the server? Maybe. Maybe. So And has many actually it has many additional advantages. You do not people do not even realize when they just use screen sharing. Actually, okay now now the server is started. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, start from the beginning. It's going to be fast. Petition of is the mother of wisdom. So this is where I wanted to get us. You can see on the top that video broadcasting, video signal broadcasting is simply suboptimal. It consumes more bandwidth. And besides this, it doesn't give any any freedom to student uh, who is observing the session. He or she cannot look, search within the within the text. If the teacher, for example, is browsing Wikipedia or some other website, which is TeacherJS positive, a uh, student just sees what the teacher is ex actually browsing, but cannot search within the document, cannot scroll in the document. While here, it's the teacher who leads the dance, but students can essentially take their own path. So that's a huge advantage according to our opinion. And yeah, at last but not least, the aim of this project is to never is to develop not to develop yet another video conferencing tool, but to provide a motivated teacher, a minimalist yet modular and extensible toolkit, a browser-based toolkit, this is very important, containing everything he or she should need to do a good online course. And that's basically it. If this interests you, Feel free to fork our project or star it or whatever. It's on GitHub. Uh, on ResearchGate, you may found an extended abstract describing the concept of code casting and solar powered microserver. And recently, there is another paper of mine which was accepted uh, for some peer reviewed journal, which is also more closely describing the the Zauberstab, the magic magic wand artifact you saw in the at the beginning of the of the talk, where I'm actually carrying around my own teaching environment. And that's basically it. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. We'll be more than happy to answer them. And these are the links where you can find us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I just I just switched. Uh, so I see there are some questions in the chat. Yes, Robert. It's based on Reveal JS. At least the uh, the presentation you saw. So the presentation module currently, indeed, is based on Reveal JS. If I would do like, okay, we won't see it now, but essentially. This is the source code of the presentation, and here is the somewhere here is the teacher JS magic aside the reveal JS magic. So yes, then what are your plans about deploy? Uh, hmm. Well, as I say, our, our dream is that people, motivated teachers or even students, will deploy this in their own scenarios. 
And what is this? I got some push nachricht, whatever. Uh, yeah, so ideally each teacher could have his own system. They can be federated by means of matrix protocol and deployment is basically motivated by, by the person of the, of the teacher. So if somebody wants to install the system, he or she is cordially invited to do so. Okay, Katya, one advantage in comparison with BBB is definitely to be able to mark and copy the text instead of only screenshot it. Indeed. And Robert. Okay, these push nachrichts are quite annoying. Uh, so nice, does the slides come? What, what do you mean with slides come editor? Alfred, mm -hmm. do you know what it is? We, we are actually using a system called Castalia, a Castalia knowledge management system to create these presentations. And maybe who knows at the next University Future Festival, we'll, oh, no, I completely missed it up. Castalia knowledge management system. That's our local system to, to create some presentations, collaborative presentations and so on, but it's, a, it's an, another story for another day. So, yeah, we, we, we have this Castalia for that. So, we, we, which uses not only, not only Reveal, but Impress and Deck and things like that. If you want, I can show you how it looks in the background. Find, uh, yep. But maybe you want to also say something concerning the questions? I'm going to mute you before I do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, any deployed presentation, be it Reveal.js or anything else could be adapted to be to be used in, in the Teacher.js application. Uh, should also not keep you from developing your own modules if there's anything you would like to use for teaching. Um, should be fairly simple to do that as well. Oh, yeah, maybe about what the actual application is written in. So we're using a framework called Svelte, similar or competitor to uh, view or react so it's all component based and fairly modular so in terms of extensibility that should also play um, yeah a big role or should make things easier at least I would say I'm muted. Feel free to follow us on GitHub. And since it's browser based, one can imagine to have many different modules. Yes. Yeah? So, for example, we don't have video webcam streaming, but instead we can, we can stream some information about facial expressions, for example. So, in a much more low bandwidth uh, way to, to still have faces involved. And yeah, maybe last last thing which it's worth mentioning that this difference which you saw between Big Blue Button and Teacher Solar, like our Teacher JS, it's in our opinion quadratic. So the more students use the system, the more the bigger the gap, so to say, the better our system will perform in comparison to other systems. The less, the more bandwidth it's spared. Because if you have five people, then it's already five squared, 25 streams. And it makes a huge difference if you have 25 video streams and if you have 25 streams, web sockets, web socket streams where you just send few bytes of uh, command and URL information. Yeah, I think we're running out of time. So I think this wonderful system will cut us down sooner or later. Yeah, well, uh, 
the system that will cut you down is in fact me, but um, <laughs> I, I was waiting in the background to uh, to wait if uh, more people had questions because I have I have a bit of a wiggle room um, to not have you sort of thrown out um, on on time. Um, but I think that was a very very interesting um, presentation, and it's a very fascinating approach to online collaboration to focus on um, bandwidth use, which is obviously something that is probably no longer as prominent in at least in the fields that I'm active in, so the people are required to have it bandwidth. <laughs> uh, but I think it's very, very interesting and obviously very, very relevant. So thank you very much. Um, as far as um, I can see from the chat, um, people enjoyed it as well. Um, and so um, thank you very much again. Um, I hope you all enjoy the festival and um, the upcoming three days. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for the presentation.